All right, diving in. Looks like we've got a pretty hefty stack of physical science study guides and notes here. Mm -hmm. Someone's getting ready to explore the world of matter. Definitely looks like it. Lots to unpack here. Absolutely, and that's what we're here for. To help sort through it all, break down some of the key concepts, and uh, you never know, maybe uncover some pretty awesome facts along the way. Oh, for sure. Some really cool stuff in here about the properties of matter, states of matter, all the ways matter can change. Physical and chemical. Yeah, exactly. And then we'll get into energy, forces, the whole shebang. Well, and one thing that really jumped out at me said that color isn't actually a property of the object itself. Oh, right. Yeah. It's all about how it interacts with light. That just seems kind of mind-blowing, don't you think? Well, yeah, when you think about it like that. But color really is just what we perceive based on which wavelengths of light an object absorbs and reflects. I mean, think about it. Some animals see a totally different spectrum of color than humans do. Right, like bees can see ultraviolet light, right? Exactly, and that shows them all kinds of patterns on flowers that we can't even see. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, and get this. Color can even affect our emotions and behavior. Really? Yeah. Think about how calming blue is or how red can make you feel energized. Ah, I yeah. never really thought about it like that. So it's not just a physical thing. It actually impacts us psychologically, too. Wow. It does. It's pretty fascinating. That is fascinating. Yeah. So besides this whole color perception thing, what are some other important properties of matter that we should really know about? Well, mass is a big one. Okay. It's basically the amount of matter in an object, and there's this law, the law of conservation of mass, right. that says that matter can't just disappear, even if it changes form. Oh, so like if I melt an ice cube, the amount of matter stays the same, it just changes from solid to liquid? Exactly. The mass is constant. Yeah. The molecules are just rearranging themselves. Then there's density, which is how tightly packed that matter is. It explains why some things float and others sink. Generally, solids are denser than liquids, and liquids are denser than gases. You know, that reminds me of this time I tried to float a giant inflatable swan in my pool. I thought it would be super buoyant, but it turned out it was filled with this really dense foam. Oh, no. Sunk right to the bottom. Mm. Total pool party fail. Mm. Ruin the aesthetic. Yeah, that's density in action, for sure. And speaking of materials, another key property is hardness. You know, like diamonds, they're the hardest known natural substance. Oh, yeah. And we use something called the Mohs Hardness Scale to measure hardness. It ranks materials from 1, which is talc, really soft mineral, all the way up to 10, which is a diamond. So diamonds are like the superheroes of the mineral world. That's one way to put it, yeah. Superheroes that are really, really good at scratching things. Yeah. And I bet those other properties, electrical and thermal conductivity, are pretty important too. Oh, absolutely. Electrical conductivity is basically how well a material allows electric current to flow through it. Mm. Metals are great conductors, okay. but things like rubber or glass, they act as insulators. That's why we use metal for wiring. Though. Exactly. We don't want electricity flowing all over the place. That's how you get zapped. And then thermal conductivity is all about how well something conducts heat. Like how a metal spoon gets hot really fast if you leave it in a hot pot of soup. Exactly. And, you know, think about cookware. You want pots and pans made of materials with high thermal conductivity so they heat up quickly and evenly. But for the handles, you want materials that are poor conductors of heat so you don't burn your hand. Makes sense. So knowing all these properties, color, mass, density, hardness, and conductivity, it helps us understand how different materials behave and choose the right materials for the job, like whether we're building a bridge or designing some new gadget. But things get really interesting when we consider that matter isn't static. It can change states. It's like matter has this whole secret life. Right, it really knows. Matter can exist in different states, solid, liquid, and gas, and it can transition between them. And those transitions? Those are, are called phase changes. Phase changes. Okay, so let's get into this whole world of shape-shifting matter, shall we? Let's do it. Actually, these phase changes are a great example of what we call physical changes. Okay, so what exactly is a physical change? Remind me. Well, it's when you alter the form or appearance of a substance, but oh. you're not actually changing its chemical makeup. The molecules themselves stay the same. Okay. Think about crumpling up a piece of paper. It's still paper, just a bit more uh, wrinkled. Or like cutting a pizza yeah and changing a shape but it's still pizza pepperoni and all exactly and phase changes like ice melting those are physical changes too the water molecules are just rearranging themselves gotcha not transforming into something new okay that makes sense so if a physical change is like rearranging the furniture mm. what's a chemical change is that like 
decorating. A chemical change is more like tearing down the whole house and building something totally different. New substances are formed okay. because the atoms in the original substances rearrange and create new chemical bonds. So it's a total transformation. Yeah. What would be some examples of that? Well, think about iron rusting. Okay. That's a chemical change because the iron's reacting with oxygen to form iron oxide, which is rust. And that's a completely different substance. It has its own unique properties. Interesting. Or burning wood. Hmm. The wood reacts with oxygen to create ash, carbon dioxide, water vapor. So baking a cake would be a chemical change then. Yeah. You start with all these separate ingredients and end up with a delicious fluffy cake. It's definitely not just rearranged flour and eggs. You got it. Baking is a great example of chemical changes at work. And one key thing to remember about chemical changes is that they're often irreversible. Yeah. Or at least very difficult to reverse. You can't unbake a cake. Sadly, no. Yeah. I've tried. It doesn't end well. So we've talked about matter, all its cool properties, how it can change physically or chemically. But what's the driving force behind all this change? Energy. Okay, yeah. energy. So it's like the fuel that powers all these transformations. Tell me more about how that works. Well, there are many forms of energy, but for our little deep dive here into physical science, we'll focus on two main ones, thermal energy and chemical energy. Okay, so let's start with thermal energy. Okay. What exactly is that? Thermal energy is related to temperature. Okay. And the movement of those tiny particles, the atoms and molecules, that make up all matter. The hotter something is, the faster those particles are moving and jiggling around, and the more thermal energy it has. So if I heat up a pot of water on the stove, I'm giving those water molecules more energy to do their crazy little dance. Exactly. And if you keep adding heat, those water molecules will eventually get so energetic they break free from their liquid state and transform into steam, which is water in its gaseous state. Yeah, it makes sense. What about chemical energy? How is that different from thermal energy? Chemical energy is the energy that's stored within the bonds between atoms. Okay. It's a potential energy just waiting to be unleashed. Oh, like a coiled spring ready to spring into action. Yeah, that's a great analogy. When we burn fuel like gasoline, we're breaking those chemical bonds and releasing that stored energy. So that released energy is what powers our cars. Right. The chemical energy in gasoline gets converted into thermal energy, which is heat, and kinetic energy, which is motion, and that makes the car go. It's a great example of energy transformation. Yeah, it is. It's amazing how energy is constantly changing forms, but it never really disappears. It just transforms, kind of like matter itself. Exactly. And that brings us to another really fundamental principle, the law of conservation of energy, okay. which states that energy can't be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. So you're telling me that the total amount of energy in the universe has always been the same. That's wild. Yeah, it's a pretty mind-blowing concept. But it helps us understand how energy flows and changes in everything around us, from the tiniest chemical reactions to the movement of galaxies. So we've covered matter, its properties, how it can change physically and chemically, and now this amazing world of energy. Yeah. But there's another piece of the puzzle here, right? What about forces? Forces are what cause objects to move or to change their motion. They're all around us, constantly interacting with matter. So forces are like the puppet masters of the universe, making things happen. That's a great way to put it. Think about the force of gravity. Right. It's what keeps us grounded on Earth. Yeah. And it's what governs the motion of planets in our solar system. Right. And I know there are forces involved when I, like, push a shopping cart or throw a ball. But how do those forces actually work? To understand those everyday forces, we need to look at Newton's laws of motion. Okay. His first law, the law of inertia, states that an object at rest will stay at rest. And an object in motion will stay in motion at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a net force. So basically, things like to keep doing what they're already doing unless something comes along and forces them to change. Exactly. Think about a hockey puck gliding across the ice. It would keep going forever if it weren't for things like friction from the ice and air resistance. Ah, okay. That makes sense. And what about Newton's second law? His second law connects force, mass, and acceleration. It tells us that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force applied to it and inversely proportional to its mass. So if I push a shopping cart with a lot of force, it'll accelerate quickly. But if that cart is full of groceries, it'll be harder to push and won't accelerate as fast. Exactly. Newton's second law in action right there in the grocery aisle. And then finally, there's his third law, which is often stated as, 
For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if I jump off a diving board, I'm pushing down on the board, and the board is pushing back up on me with the same amount of force. You got it. And that equal and opposite reaction force from the board is what propels you into the air. Interesting. It's also how rockets work. They expel hot gas downward, and the equal and opposite reaction force pushes the rocket upward. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So forces are behind so much of what we see happening around us, from the way we move to the motion of planets. Absolutely. And you know, forces also play a huge role in shaping our planet through those really dramatic geological processes we hear about all the time, like earthquakes and landslides. Okay, so I've got matter, energy, forces. It's all starting to connect. <laughs> but sometimes we need a little help to make those forces work for us, right? That's where simple machines come in, don't they? Exactly. Simple machines are tools that help us manipulate forces to make work easier. They're kind of like our force multiplying allies. Like levers and pulleys? Yes. Levers, pulleys, wheels and axles, inclined planes, wedges, screws. These six simple machines are all about making life a little easier. They amplify our effort or redirect force so we can accomplish tasks that would be much more difficult otherwise. So like using a ramp to move a heavy box up a step or using a wrench to loosen a bolt. Precisely. These simple machines take advantage of really basic physics principles to magnify our force or change its direction, making us way more efficient. It's amazing how something as simple as a ramp can make such a big difference. And it's cool how these basic concepts of force and motion apply to so many parts of our lives. It really is. From opening a door to launching a rocket into space, it all comes down to understanding how forces interact with matter. Okay, so we've covered the basic building blocks of the universe. Yeah. Matter, energy, and forces. Mm. Now I'm curious about something else. Waves. 